All right, so in this video, we are gonna ride the classic wide glide, the forgotten Dyna. Let's check it out. Yeah, what year is this? 11. 11? I didn't realize it was that old. Yeah, huh. All right, what's going on YouTube? BK Low is back in the building. And we are out here in the town of Kent with my main man, Sean, the Sportster Wide Glide Orange Flames, as well as Vongaslot, if you followed our last video. And yeah, it's that moment you've all been waiting for. You've seen this bike so many times in all my videos. Today's gonna be the day I actually ride the Wide Glide. How do I turn this thing on? Are you kidding me? Just hit the, hit the ignition. I know. Dude, what, what are you doing, man? All right, get, get off. Get get off! You're ha you're having issues. All right, look. That, that's how you start an old Dyna. Oh. All right. Good. It starts. Well, this is certainly different. Sounds good. And yeah, if you watch my previous video, definitely, if you live on the East Coast, make this a destination ride. The town of Kent, totally crazy. So many bikes out here. And it's not like a biker town or anything with a bunch of dive bars. It's like a quaint Connecticut town. Oh my God. Wow. There is a lot I could say right now about this bike. <laughs> Which is why I'm glad that I'm doing a video on it. Whoa, is this different. Whoa. <laughs> uh, Vaga Slot's giving me the thumbs up. All right, so, yeah, it's titled The Forgotten Dyna because the truth is, is you just don't see a lot of people on these you know sean is my only friend out of many friends who ride that ride this bike <laughs> so 2011 wide glide not only do you just not see wide glides very often but you don't see orange wide glides with flames very often so first impressions, well the first thing I'll say is if you want a little bit of history of BK Low is when I was ready to come off of a Sportster back in 2015, so we're going back five years now, I knew I wanted a Dyna and I don't think I've ever told anyone this but the Wide Glide was actually one of the ones I was considering. It was between a Wide Glide and a Street Bob actually. I really like the Wide Glide, especially the bottle that they had just come out with, where it was like black denim with the flames. It just looked so classic and so bad, man, where it's just like, ah, oh, I want to pull up on that thing with my hair slicked back. You know, it's that classic, classic Harley Davidson look. You know, I like the raked out fork. I like the flames, you know? It was a cool look, and I still think it's a cool look, you know? It, everything doesn't have to be club style, you know? <laughs> so yeah, when, when it came time and my dad took me to um, Belmore Harley-Davidson to start sitting on some Dynas, the Wide Glide was actually the first one that I sat on because aesthetically, like I said, I really liked it. But then I sat on it, and the forward controls, especially on these bottles, it just felt so uncomfortable and so not confidence inspiring to have my legs stretched out like that, that I was immediately turned off. And I was like, yeah, I can't easily access the controls. It seems kind of sketchy. I don't feel confident. You know, I don't think this is the one for me. So then the next bike I sat on was a Street Bob with mid controls. And immediately I was like, yep, this is the one. This makes total sense. And it was mostly because of, well, yeah, you know, it's a very different setup, you know, but 
the street bob just felt way 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 more more suited to my riding style more suited to my height and weight etc you know whereas maybe if i was taller the wide glide would have felt a little bit more comfortable so you guys know the story i was all set up to buy a street bob and then lo and behold they announced the low rider s right when i was about to buy the street bob and the rest is history you know i bought one of the first 2016 low rider s's and it just came out it was set up with all the plans I already had for the Street Bob. So I was like, yeah, let me just buy this. So it's already blacked out, it's already set up. You know, it's got a 110. And I still ride it today, five years later. But now I digress, I digress. Let's talk about the Wide Glide, which I'm riding now, five years after I was interested in buying it. And man, there are so many bikes on the road. It's one of those days where my hand is just getting tired from waving. Whoa, Bulls Bridge. This is crazy. <laughs> the photo op. Leave it to Vongasflat to get the most impossible photos. One lane bridge, he doesn't care. Please follow his Instagram. He has very, very unique photos. All right, but we are digressing. A few moments later. We just had a very, very funny police interaction. Cop pulls over. Connecticut police goes, what are you guys running straight pipes? And he was very concerned over the volume of our pipes. And it's like, uh, yeah, officer. Yes, we know that they're very loud. That's why we're wearing earplugs right now. And then Sean just goes up to him and goes, loud pipes save lives, brother. And then he said, oh yeah, you're right. I understand. Go about your way, gentlemen. But again, I digress. So yeah, we had to stop at that bridge and take some pictures. Got some good pictures of Vongaswat. And yeah, man, just the more we ride up here, the more I'm just blown away by Like, look at this scenery. It's crazy. We'll definitely be coming up here again. Yeah, so I was really turned off by the forward controls on this bike, you know, and I was also turned off because I thought with the front fork being, with the fork being so raked out that you'd be sacrificing maneuverability and control. But what I gotta say, and you know, this could be because I this is now five years of heavy riding after, but the forward controls actually feel really comfortable. And I'm a shorter dude, I'm only 5'7", you know? But I'm able to reach the rear brake just fine. I'm able to shift the bike just fine. And it feels great. So I was always kind of intimidated by forward controls until right now where I, I get it guys like those of you who rock forward controls like right now in this moment I completely understand so yeah the wide glide if you were expecting me to make this video and talk a bunch of trash and make fun of it that's not this video I'm actually really enjoying this bike right now and when I made a video back in the winter when we were debating whether Sean should sell this bike and get a new lowrider right now in this moment I completely understand why he decided to keep it this is a really fun bike you know and especially the way he has it set up with these clean sweet pullbacks you know, yes, they're not T-bars. Yes, there's no fairing. Yes, there's no mid-controls. Yes, it's not a club style dyno. But I think the reason why this is so much fun right now is because it's so different than that setup. So it's a really like unique feel compared to what I'm usually on. <laughs> Which is, you know, is a bunch of dynas with T-bars and step-ups and mid-controls. But yeah, this just completely different. 
And I guess the thing that I'm most surprised about with this bike, because it comes off as that classic bobber feel, is I'm just surprised at how incredibly comfortable this bike is. You know, in all the days, like a day like today, where we're doing hundreds of miles, you know, I would look at Sean, I'd be like, dude, you, you must be getting beat up without a fairing. You know, you're pretty bare bones on that thing, you know, but I'm, but I'm sitting in it now, and with the forward controls, the way that this is set up, you really, really sit back into this bike, you know? Like, I do feel locked in place as well. So yeah, I think the biggest, one of the biggest surprises of this bike is just generally how comfortable it is. The other thing that I'm really surprised with this, and this makes me think a lot about what Peter Guns would tell me very often, which is, if you know him, then he tells us all the time, you guys don't need those 110 engines. You guys don't need big engines. It's unnecessary. Look at me. All my bikes are running, you know, 80 cubic inches or whatever. You know, it's, it's definitely below a 103. And he's like, you know me, I ride fast, which is true. Now I'm on Sean's bike, and I think whatever came stock in 2011 Dynas, it's a 90-something cubic inches. It's definitely under 103. But I'm not wanting for power with this thing. This thing really picks up and goes just fine, you know? I'm not wanting for power. So I gotta agree with Peter on this. You know, you could run smaller engines, cab them up, work them up, and boom, you'll be fine, man. It's it's really it really has don't get me wrong, I'm not I'm not throwing away my, my 116 up there or my 110 anytime soon, but it really does kind of show you like yeah is, is it really necessary i don't know so yeah three things so far number one is i'm really amazed at how good forward controls feel number two i'm really surprised at how comfortable this bike is and number three i'm also surprised at how powerful this bike still is because at the end of the day yeah we're calling it the forgotten dyna but it is a dyna you know we're talking about one of the lightest and smallest frames at the time with one of the biggest engines available made to go fast yeah Woo! oh man is this fun yeah it actually it makes me wonder if five years ago you know if i had the amount of experience that i do now and if i actually took that bike out and test rode it if my path as a biker and motovlogger would have been very much changed. I may have been FXWG Brooklyn. Things could have been different. Could have been riding around on something like this. Which honestly, I think I would have had just as much fun. <laughs> like I said, it doesn't always have to be club style dinas, you know? It doesn't matter what you ride. I really do believe that every bike out there has its own strengths and uniqueness so what i will say because i'm not just gonna sit here and tell you that like this is the best bike ever as much as i love sean and as much fun as i'm having on this bike downsides to this bike is i'm sure it's a combination of the raked out fork and the forward controls but i i have noticeably cannot take on curves like I can with my Dynas. You know, it's like noticeably. I, I could sink my Dynas into curves confidently. With this, even just now, like I came in at speeds I would come in on on my Dyna and not think twice about it and realize like, oh dude, I'm like barely about to make this. So your turning capabilities, your maneuverability is definitely sacrificed on this bike for those forward controls and for that raked out front end. There's no, no doubt about it. I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that it's not. So, you know, this bike, who who is it good for? Well, honestly, I think it could be good for anyone, but I think if you're someone that's like trying to, if you're going like 100% performance built 
then you might not want to get this bike because again like you know you're starting off with forward controls and you're starting off with a raked out fork probably not the best moves if you're going for performance but if you're someone that's like doing like a lot of rides like you know maybe you're starbucks hopping that's right i won't say bar hopping i'll say starbucks hopping or you know you're riding here and there to bike nights or even if you're throwing down 100 mile days on the highway i think this is a great bike for you if you really like the aesthetic but again if you're going full-on purpose-built you might want to stick with what we know works you know an fxd fxdx fxdl fxdls the uh, 2020 models have held up pretty well, you know. FXRs, there's a lot of options out there, but I don't know if you're going full on performance built, purpose built, if this is what you want to go with. But I'm not discounting it. I am feeling amazing on this bike. I think if you plan to do a lot of highway riding, this bike could be for you. You know, again, if you want that classic, classic styling, that bobber look, you know, but still want to be on a Dyna, still want to be able to be somewhat Dyna bro with your Simpson helmet and your high socks and your bands, which I think that would look cool actually, you know, if you rolled up all Dyna bro out, but you're on a wide glide. But yeah, shout out to you, my buddy Sean for finally letting me ride this thing. We've been friends for about three years now and um, I've always wondered what it felt like so it's nice to finally see what this thing feels like. I'm having a great time on it. Shout out to Vongaslot, I'm having a great day with you man. And yeah, we're gonna continue our ride out here. So you guys, you know, as always, I'd love to hear what you guys think. You've seen plenty of this bike on my channel. What do you guys think about the Wide Glide, the Forgotten Dyna? Who do you think it's for? Do you like it? Do you dislike it? Why? Why not? Have you ridden it before like I'm doing right now? I'd love to hear what your experience was like. But yeah, let me know in the comments. If you like this content, take a second, click that thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Consider checking out my Patreon if you want some additional content. Stay safe out there, stay low, listen to the bad brains, positive mental attitude, always, always, always. And that's it. BK Low is out.